sir. And we are live. What's going on, coaches? How you doing? I am here with the GOAT, Coach Mazzoni. Coach Mazzoni, thank you so much for, for coming back on yeah, and talking some ball with us. Yeah, I'm kind of excited today. Anytime nowadays I can talk ball with somebody other than myself, I'm excited. I, I hear you. Well, we've got a lot of coaches here. And coaches, um, if you have any questions, put them in chat. Also, make sure that if you're watching on Facebook to give StreamYard the permission so that if you have a question that pertains to what we're talking about, I can show your name and the question on the chat and everything like this. Um, Coach, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to bore you saying, hey, what's your backstory? Because if they don't know what your backstory is, they should get out of the stream because <laughs> you are a living legend. Um, <laughs> let's just jump right into it. What is the yeah. thing you want to talk to us about today? Okay. Couple things is all right. First of all, for you guys that are getting to play or going to play games this fall, I just want to wish you guys the best of luck. I want you, you and your loved ones and your team to be healthy and uh, you know, stay within the protocol and have a successful year. For those of you guys that, like myself, that is getting pushed back anywhere from two to four or five months before we get a chance to play, um. I'm ready to talk ball if anybody wants to talk ball, okay? Because I'm bored, so I need something to do. But so this is what I want to do. And you, this is the first, Ron, this will be the first time I've used this format. Heck this yeah. is a, and I'm not, I'm not really, I don't own this. Uh, I, you know, our school got it uh, for, our whole off, for our whole offense and defensive staff. Um, and I think it's fantastic. I mean, I just, I live on it every day. And it, it's just, this just play app. OK, um, I think there are some there are some other colleges and I don't know if they hit any high school. And it's like as, as reasonable as I know, talking our DFO, it was like so reasonable to get into this. But you can build. And I'm just going to show you because this is my first time using it. So if I kind of have some screw ups, you guys can bear with me. But what I do, what I did was I built my playbook. OK, so say if I was in third medium. There was my third medium player, my caddy plays. Then as I go in there, all right, and click caddy, all right, it'll have all my diagrams so I can build all the different ways I want to run caddy. And then I can also add the videos or the cut-ups to it. So it's like one-stop shopping for me. No more the Visio, the Excel sheets, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to just jump right in it. And then you build installs. And the cool thing, at no extra charge, is all my – I can share this with all my offensive players. And uh, so, th and this is how they will see it. So I've built, we're going to talk about tight zone, about zone read today, just kind of really the ins and outs. This is how I built it for these guys. There's all my slideshows. There's my screenshots. All right. There's my videos. Okay. There's all the videos or cuts that I want to show my players. Okay, and then obviously you can put assignments in there or whatever. Anyway, that's what I'll be working off of today. So this is actually what the player will see when he opens his iPad. This is what he sees. So if he says, all right, I want to go look at Zoro Zulu, all right, and I want to view it, this is what he will see. So this is what we're going to work off of, okay? okay. Um, so ba basically, hold on. Basically, I'm using my touch screen. All right. I kind of want to get in depth with this because this this was a, a, a play that in 2010 and 11 when I started running this was something that defense is. It was basically option football. Right. And this was something that defenses had not caught up with. All right. So we had a lot of success running the football, which is our inside zone read. And now everybody's running. So yeah. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes runs it. Right. Every, everybody does it. Um I still think it's a good play. I don't, I'm not going to give up to it. It's still our number one scheme in the book. All right. Uh, but I think here, I'm just going to kind of go through the adjustments or the, how, you know, you, you, a scheme is good. It's good for a couple of years and the defense sees it enough and they scheme how to stop it. So it's just a, it's just a revolving door, right? It's always fluid. Okay. So basically it's like this, our inside zone read. All right. The quarterback knows he's got a five man, six man or seven man box we're going against. Right. He knows if it's a five or a six man box, he's either going to key the six defender or read the six defender. All right. He knows in a seven man box, if they add the extra defender, it's a throw. 
All right, so I'm going to go through this kind of quick to get to the, that's just the rules. All right, so what we develop, what we what we do is we have different different ways to run our, in our, our zone read. One is basically just the basic zone read, which we all know, where the quarterback reads the C-gap, okay? So the C-gap defender can either, either be a defensive end or can be a linebacker, okay, if there's six guys in the box. If there's five in the box, it's the backer outside the box. So it's, to me, it's all numbers. It's always a six defender. Then we can tag it with an M call or our macho, all right? Now we're just going to say, hey, look, at, we're just going to man the backside defensive end and not put that pressure on the quarterback of having to read a, a slow play or a wrong shoulder guy or a guy attacking the mesh and all that. And we're going to strictly put his conflict read to the backer, all right? And then we have what we call 12 and 13 T or Tyler, all right, which means no matter if there's 100 guys in the box, the quarterback knows he's always reading the defensive end, okay, his first level conflict read. This is usually used with, with when you're using some sort of quick motions or any type of motions because obviously motion that crosses the ball, all right, is going to change your box a lot of the times. So it's going to change your points. It's going to change the tracks. It's going to change your offensive line calls. All right, if you go quick motion and all of a sudden the Willie, the mic leaves and the will comes in. Well, we don't have time to repoint and do all those things. So that's that's the reason for a, just a pure track uh, zone read. All right, now when we add the six the six blocker in there, the tight end. All right, then we want to stay with the same mindset. All right, if it's still 22 23, all right. The, the quarterback is still reading the sixth defender because we're using the tight end to block on the perimeter. If we tag it with, with M for man, now, now the tight end is going to man block. And, and I'm going to go through all this in drawings and stuff. He's going to man block the, uh, the, the sixth defender, the backer. All right. If we go C or Charlie, he's going to man block the C gap and give us the D gap to read. All right. So, so this is just an idea of all the different, forms of tight zone, of zone read, right? So this just kind of explains, all right, explains all the zone read. Like I said, this is my install for my players. So uh, now do you, do you go over all of those install, like those different forms of your uh, zone on day one, or are they structured in different days? Uh, they are structured in different days. So if I was to start this thing, hold on. If I, when, when we start this, Okay. Well, we want to we want to teach twelve and thirteen Zoro Zulu. Mm -hmm. All right, both out of a five man blocking surface and a six man blocking surface. So the play doesn't change for the O line or the quarterback, but the presentation changes. Okay. So it may be a nub tight end. It may be two backs in the backfield. Whatever it is, right? Okay. Then it, then the, then the, then the and on the same day we're always going to put the track play in because that's one of our tempo plays. Okay. And the next practice is probably going to be a man scheme, our macho day. Macho to us is zone read, but we're going to man the backside. Okay. So now we're now now the tight end is involved actually in the scheme. So your quarterback, he be we call it third level conflicts. All right. Now he's reading the seventh defender. Okay. All right now, and I'll draw that. It's really simple. I'll draw all that up in a second. So yeah, we don't put all this in in one day, Ron. All right. Okay. We, we want to stay scheme specific for that day and now just various different formations and motions that we can run the same 12 Zoro Zulu out of. All okay. Right? All right. All right. So. So what I want to talk talk to you about, this is just the, the calls our guys make. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about was. Um, and, and we'll get to that was 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 blocking the 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 three four because we see so much everybody sees so much three four right and the issues i had with it okay so any the, the, because the defense is showing you five in the box and they've actually have the sixth and seventh defender outside of the box and it's our job to understand okay which guy is conflict and how do i how do i build their conflict how do i build my scheme against the three forefront. So this is what I have kind of, we've kind of come to the conclusion of, all right, is we want to build as many three, four, three by one formations 
as we can to put to put pressure on the extra conflict uh, extra conflict player. Because if you're a if you're a, a four one cover two team, line blocks the five guys in the box, and you conflict read to Will Backer. If it's four two, all right, they block the five guys, and you conflict read the end. I mean, there's all, all usually there's only one conflict player, but in a three four front, there's the possibility of two conflict players, right? So this is this drawing right here is all right is is shows all right. Either two ways you that we want to do it. All right, one is running the ball to the boundary, which would be the the, the uh, diagram on the left, and one is running the ball to the field because it makes a difference. All right, against three four teams. Right, if we are running the ball to the boundary, all right, we want to go ahead, even if it, he's a drop backer, that buck out there. Right, we want the line to count him. Right, so we want an automatic push call into the boundary because I want both the conflicts, all right, to the same to the same side for the quarterback. Now I know the backside the backside tackle, his job would be if that was a four down front would be to to sift the end and get to the Mike backer, but he ain't sifting the end when the guy's a four eye. All right, the guy's gonna play a five, great. But if he's playing a four eye, he's not. So this automatically becomes a man call on the backside, and we turn this into a second level conflict. All right. Now, if we're running it to the field, all right, I don't want to push to a conflict guy, this Sam Backer, that may be maybe halfway to the hash out there. All right. So I don't want the line to count him. All right. I'm going to deal with him. That's why I say three by one. I'm going to deal with him with with my RPO or my my RSOs, my bubble screens, things like that for the quarterback. All right, and now I just want the quarterback. Now all he's that's a pre snap conflict. Now I want him just to have to worry about the at after the snap. All right, to worry about the boundary conflict player. The other good thing I do like about running it to the field. To me, the plus is in a three by one is I love the gut call on the backside of zone read. All right. I think it creates space. It's hard if you just man base man uh, of uh, three, four or three, two front where where the, the guards get into the wheel, the tackles get. The, it just turns into a pile of mush. All right. My job is to create space for the back. So we're playing a three-four front. You're going to see our our offensive line cheat their splits wider, trying to create space in the box. And any time that we can gut a four eye, all right, we're going to gut the four eye on the backside. Is right? that something you call, or is that something you let the guard and tackle make a call? The guard and tackle make that call, all right? Because I because nice. I don't know that that guy could be a that guy could be a a loose four eye, or he could line up in a five, all right. And then the, the guts off. Okay? okay, so this is basically this is primarily built for all right a three four with the team that's playing tight four eyes. Right. Okay, um, that's a good call. So, so as we go through our drawings here, all right, uh, this is a very and like uh, I'm, I'm I'm not embarrassed, but it's almost like I'm telling you guys shit you guys already know. All right. If all you zone read guys, I'm, this isn't like some revelation that I've had. Okay. But I'm just going to kind of go through this quickly. All right. Uh, Cause the first thing we all learned when we're running zone read is split safety, post safety, right? If there's split safety and you're in a spread set, if there's split sa safety, right, there should only be five in the box. If there's not, if there's more than five in the box, you should be throwing the quick game or the key screen out there. All right. If there's a post safety, there should be six in the box. All right. And that means now you're getting some sort of post safety defense and you should be reading the first level conflict, the end. Okay. So that's the first key for the quarterback split safety, post safety. Okay. If it's split safety and there's six in a box, I guarantee you they're spent, they're rolling a safety down on you. All right. On over one of your slots. So don't, so don't, uh, you know, don't fall, don't, don't take the bait. Okay. So th this is the first thing we teach right here is a first level conflict read. Now, when we're, when we're going to run a first-level – when when it's a first-level conflict read, all right, then – so, in other words, this is Zoro Zulu, a zone read, pure zone read. We want, all right, 
to, to be in our quick game uh, RPOs on the outside. We're not going to throw a lot of quick game, all right, as an RPO when we're in true zone read because I don't want to – court. we've done it. There's a few exceptions to that, but that's not, not, not our main deal. Most of this stuff is built with key screens, bubble screens, things like that. The next thing that I did, the next thing is, is that basically all our pure zone read or track uh, zone read plays are pure tempo plays, right? We're trying to line up and snap these places as fast as we can so that they can't. Um, and let me do this, all right? Since this is so cool, I've been dying to do this right here. Go for it. Okay, go to the whiteboard, all right? So, so does it look good? Yeah, it does. All right. So here's what we always deal with, right? The backside. Two things we'd like to do in, my, in the perfect world. We'd always love to run to the three technique. That would be number one for me. Okay. Two to three technique. Okay. So I would love to build, build, this play so I can always run it with the bubble to the side of the back. All right. If that, if, if they are always setting it, I kind of go off, off course on this, but if they're always setting, all right, the three technique to your back. All right. So now they can play the little exchange ga game on you. All right. When you're trying to, they know you're trying to zone to him and they play this game to take away your zone read, that's a problem. All right, let me get that away. Okay, so one of our answers is for Zoro Zulu, which is our pure zone read, Zoro Zulu, is we would now go ahead and call Izzo. All right. Here's the difference, okay? Zoro and Zulu, I've called the direction and everything of the play. Dual right Zulu. My guys are running Zulu. Dual right Zoro. My guys are running Zoro. Dual right Izzo, okay? Run it to the three technique. So it's the way we can check the zone read. So back, you can either start here. He wants to run it to the three. He would say even, even, even. I would either bounce it over and run it, or I could start him in pistol, but down because I want to run it. I want to run it to that. Okay. All right. It kind of got off on that tangent there. All right. So no, that's good. I like that. Let me get rid of this. So that's that's one. That's one. That is one way. All right. That we 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 try to game plan this. The next way is. The next big problem that we have, all right, is exchange. Okay, so now we get an exchange team. Whoever those backers are. Now we get an exchange team. Well, if I'm running Zulu, okay, I've got to get a B slip right here. Okay, this is post safety defense. Quarterback knows that's my conflict read, all right? Because we are zoning those guys. The tackle and guard are trying to be slipped to the will backer, and the quarterback knows there's a sixth defender. It's a first level conflict. Okay, well, exchange happens, all right? And I get a pull read, and I don't really want that. I don't want to do now. Your quarterback might make a miss, tight tuck it, outrun him, whatever, but I don't want to do this. I don't want to spend my life doing that, all right? So our answer there is, all right, either Izzo or Macho. Okay, so now we're just telling the line, hey, guys, we are just going to – Take your sift off. Take your sift off and let you just man that backside for us. 
And now the quarterback knows, all right, that I've changed his conflict from this guy. And now you can even start in macho, play some fold games in there, whatever you want, all right? And now I've changed the conflict to him, okay? So now I'm going to build an RPO out here. I'm going to build some sort of RPO, maybe a, a for because because my chances of hitting man here, right, Ron, are a lot higher. Okay, one free, yeah. six, four, two, one free. All right. So now I'm going to build some rub routes out here to where if he wants to fit the run, now I'm throwing my quick game rub stuff. All right. So. I'm just kind of giving you all the problems we've had and kind of our answers, all right, to when we see a team, this is how they're going to play us, is that Zoro Zulu is maybe not our base play that week. Maybe it's Macho. And that's the other reason that we went all tempo stuff, all right, with our with our pure zone read, all right, because we want to get up and get going and we don't want the defense to – to have, have the ability to line up and make their little checks and see where the back is and do all that kind of stuff. Now, how that fits the 3-4, okay? That's the roundabout way of doing it, okay? I said getting there, okay? So I said out here, whoever these guys are, okay? I said build three-by-ones. You can build it either here or here, but the, or you can build it here, okay? So however you're going to do it, let's build a three-by-one. Okay. Now, this is an odd front. Buck, Will, Mike, Nickel. Okay, the guy I'm putting stress on, PSL, PSL, all right, all right, is this Nickel Sam out here, all right? Because I've got the possibility. I've got blockers, okay? I've got blockers and a ball carrier out here. So, if, if they're sitting like this and there's a strong safety, there's seven, there's a strong safety in a corner, in a corner sitting, all right, they have to, they have to add a body out here, all right? They got to add a body in my, my thinking, okay? So that takes care of that conflict read for the quarterback, okay? Well, I'm going to push it. And I love this because it gives me freaking great angles at these guys. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, yeah, that tackle, if we can knock all these cats to the sideline right there with these angles, that's good angles. All right. Now, this tackle, right, it's zone read, but there ain't no way he, he, he's supposed to sift to that Mike Backer. So now we are going to um, man him and make him – the conflict reads. So just like I showed you on the 4-2, nothing changes for this guy. All right? So this might be – and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – as soon as I draw this, I'm going to get to the film. All right? All right. And before we have one question, though, while you're doing that, on the, that fold block, let me bring it up. Coach Wheeler wants to know, um, is there ever an issue with the running back running into the down block nose? Never. Okay. Never. No. At least I should never say never, okay? Because the first time you run it, your back's going to run into that nose, and you're going to say, that damn Lazoni, okay? <laughs> damn you, Noel. <laughs> I thought you said never. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to give you a base. Okay, so we're sitting here in trio, okay, and I've got a three-down team. Okay, they got to make a decision what they want to do, okay? So if they're going to play three down, they've got their nickel Sam, okay? So they're probably going to roll the safety either down three strong or nickel Sam outside three buzz. So I'm going to create my post safety, most likely defense, not always, okay? I right, like that. All right, so now I'm just running plain old, all right, macho or Zoro Zulu because it'll turn to the same thing. I know I've got this working, all right? I know there's my conflict right there. 
This is my pre-snap conflict, all right? So if this guy wants to fire, all right, it better look like this, all right? It better look like that, all right? And on my, on my, uh, that may be my RPO, all right? My RPO for this play. So if he fires, if he fires, I'm thinking line route. If he doesn't fire because he's got to play coverage, now I'm thinking, all right, the conflict. If he decides to fit the run, all right, I'm right where this guy was, is now I'm creating a rub route, all right, to fill that void right there. Okay, so that's just kind of a base play for us. All right, macho, trio macho. All right, so let's go back and see if I – let me go through these real quick. All right. So first level, all right, there you can see it right there against the 3-4, a push and an able. It turns to a second level conflict, okay? Here it is to the field, all right, to the field versus post safety, all right? And these are just the screenshots. So I'm just showing you this because this is what my players get a look at, all right? They get a look at a screenshot. They get a look at the drawing. They get a look at a screenshot, all right? All right, this is this thing right here that I was talking about. These guys are going to do a webinar on the 29th, all right? So good for them, good for that, all right? Now let's go to, hold on. And we have a question in chat. Uh, why do you like running it to the three and not the one? Well, because of two things, all right? One is is zone read, all right? I still got my deal here. As this loads, I'll show you this. Okay. Okay, as – I wonder if I can erase this whole thing at one you time. You can. If you hit the eraser like you have been doing, there's a tra – like a little trash can all the way to the right, right by the scissors, and got then it. clear the page. Okay, so where your big plays come from, okay, ideally, I would like this. All right, because these are these guys' gaps. Okay. So if I'm going to, if, if the bubbles here, the big plays come from, all right, the big plays come from cutback on zone read. Mm -hmm. And your offensive line, they don't really have to move anybody. All they have to do is displace the D line. So that's why you like to cheat kind of big splits, create space, because all this guard has to do, he doesn't have to move him off the ball. All he's got to do is move him this way. Yeah. Okay. All this center has to do is protect that guard's inside with his first step and then climb to the wheel, all right? All this this guy, all the guard has to do is basically just get this defensive line moving towards the sideline, okay? This is where I want to play the game back here, okay? There's a lot, lot less chance of me getting a twist right here, all right? I'm zoning here. Right, I'm covering every gaps here, so twists, they're still an issue, but they shouldn't bother me as much, all right? <clears throat> um, but on the backside, I'm probably not going to get a twist, all right? Now, this tackle we call a SIF tackle. What he's doing is he, he is just protecting the B-gap, all right? So he wants to – he does not really take zone footwork. He almost takes power footwork. He wants to inside step to protect the B gap and then outside step to maintain the, the width and even get his hand on this end if he's a tight five. And then he just wants to climb, all right, and take this backer wherever he goes. All right, he's just got to cover that guy up. There's our read. All right, if he closes to the back, all right, obviously I'm pulling and now I'm running. All right, if he slow plays it, we want the back to press the A gap, all right, and get back to the cutback lane, 
right there because we're blocking everybody this way. Okay? okay. That's why I like it to the bubble. Okay. All right. So let's go here. Back up. Now, do you send all this stuff to your kids like right off the bat or do you drip it out to them day by day? Okay. So like if I go back here, so it, it's, so like, I, I like say like right here, I've got all the, I've got all of this working on all of install one. Huh? Okay. So like we're talking about key screens. Well, they can go in here, right? And they can, they, they can, okay, there's bolt. All right. So they can see what bolt is. All right. Or there's comet. Okay. They can see what comet is. All right. So this will be on their iPad. Okay. All right? So as I'm installing, I decide all this is all this is on my playbook. And it's whatever I, I click one button and I can send them the okay. RSOs. So I may only send them Zoro, Zulu, and I can only click I whatever I click, I just send them what I send want. Them. To okay. Them. Okay. It's a hell of a, it's a hell of a program. And this is what, this is the best thing about it is getting over here to this. Right. So this is on his same deal. So my, my players have this, this same. Let's see, get back. Okay. Have another uh, question from Coach Mark. He wants to know what's what are you telling your aiming point for your running back? Okay. Oh, great question. All right, here it is, right here. I can show you. I got to get back to the deal here. Hold on. Okay. All right. Bear with me, guys. I'm, I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> oh, no wonder. I got the freaking clicker upside down. <laughs> That's why it wasn't working. Okay. So, so I, and now they're adding to this uh, program where I can actually draw on this, where you guys can see it like a telestrator. But if you look at this right here, it's exactly what we're talking about. Even though they're showing me split safeties. Can you see my little deal there, my little hand? Yeah, we can see the hand. So even though they're showing me split safeties right here, there's six in the box. All right? So, hey, don't don't fall for the RPO of throwing the sticker out right here because they're going to spin down. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you know right now, six in the box, I'm reading this defensive end. All right? So now we're, now we're zoning. We've got to B-slip this to this wheel backer because the conflict is the first level right there. All right. Now, if this was split safety in this wheel backer, this Mike backer right here had walked out side of the framework of this end. All right. Now my quarterback knows that he becomes, he becomes the conflict. He becomes a second level conflict because the tackle is now going to block. He's not getting a B slip from the guard call. He's, 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 because the guard knows I'm manning this guy. So he's getting a man call. So now he knows I'm man on that end. And now the quarterback will read the second level conflict. All okay. right. So. So this is one of our tempo plays. All right. This would just be whatever you want to call it, a one word tempo play. Where the they, these guys out here, they know they're lining up in three by one. They know they're going to run stick with a key two. He knows he's running a gift on the back side, and they're running Z Zoro or Zulu. This is what I was talking. The guy said, "Why do I want to run it to the, the um, cutback for the cutback?" Right now, I think this is to a three technique, but we'll see here in a second. It is. It is to a three. All right. But you can see right here, look at the look at the angles, right? Knock him out. Climb to him. Knock him out. All right. The tough block is this right here. All right. The B slip. Okay. So so because that guard's got to stay heavy on that B so that tackle can take it over. Because they are zoning 
to the Mike Packer. Okay, Trevor right here is reading the end. Hey, there's the track, exactly the track you want for your back for the question. All right, so we want to be open. We'll be open, crossover. Let's see what this one does here. Nope, oh, wrong one. Sorry, wrong one. It's all right. We'll go to the next one. So open crossover and then downhill. And, and we don't, we don't, no matter what the defense is, okay, is that he wants to track open crossover. He wants to track the backside A gap. Okay. Okay. Backside A gap right there. All right. This is the same play. Okay. But now the sh now it's a shade. So now there's no B slip. All right. Okay. And now we've got to work. We're still first level conflict read. There's no B slip on this. Now it's one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. All right. This is the conflict guy. So theoretically, this tackle has to get to him. All right. It's kind of a goofy defense, but theoretically, that's what it is. But they have overshifted their backers, right, because of the tight end. All right. So let's run the zone read back to the boundary because they're bossing the backers. And let's get the tight end over here, all right, to block the alley, all right, to go alley to safety. And now we're still reading the defensive end. Okay, so everybody's pretty good right here, right? The tack, the tack, the the uh, the the tackle gets eaten up right there, right? The tackle gets eaten up by the tackle gets eaten up by the five technique, right? Here comes the tight end, right? He's he, all he's doing is ensuring the quarterback. He should peek the box, but he's really going for the safety. All right. So he should just keep going right there. We got a pull read. All right. Got a pull read. And now we're off. And he got to, he could he should have ran the ball there, but he threw it. What are you telling your quarterback that if he's reading the C gap and let's say that guy crashes down and there's no one in that C gap to read, are you telling him to pull and run or to hand off? Yes. No, run. Pull, okay. Pull. Yes. Okay. Um, so here's an example of a bad track by a back, and this is this is a good example right here. Okay. Get it back a little bit. Okay. So whatever goofy defense, right? They should be pushing, right? the The right side should be pushing, pushing to here. Okay. They are pushing – the guard in the center should be pushing to 36 right here, okay? This guy right there, he's a four-eye, so that turns to a man. The quarterback knows his conflict read has actually moved out here, okay? So this should be a give the whole way, okay. a give. Now, if you watch the back, because the conflict's already out of there. If you watch the back, okay, the difference in this back and the other one is watch where this thing ought to hit. This thing ought to hit right here. What, the front side or back right, side? Right, right, it ought to hit right down that hash. Okay. Okay. We can't, we can't see the touching. Oh, you can't this time? No. Wait, maybe I pushed the button wrong. There, I got it. This ball should hit right down that hash. Okay, the conflict, the conflict played outside. Like we said, he pre-lined outside. He pre-lined, all right, right here. There, there we go. go. He pre-lined it, okay, right here. He's usually in there, right? He pre-lined out there. That's usually, that's our conflict read right there, okay? He's out there. We've got all these guys blocked here, 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 
here. We're pushing to this guy. So we got a double, we got two double teams, right? He's off on the backer right there. And now the back should be creasing it right there. Don't go over there. That's what we're blocking everybody yeah. to. <laughs> that's what that's what frustrates me when I first put this play in. Yes, it's the back's track is important on this. Let's see here. Uh, that's the same front. Let me find a different front. Okay, this is just the the, the 12 third 13 T or Tyler. Okay. And so you call we'll, that when you're on when you use any kind of motion? Yes. Any okay. kind of motion because of – because this is like the best, Ron. Hey, Crap. man, I'm, I'm, I'm glad yeah. I can help you out. Yeah. Okay, so this is any time that we are bringing our F quick motion into this, which is one of my favorite plays, right? All right, I'm just going to put a 4-2 up just to make it simple. All right. Well, or a 4-4. Four, four, let's, just, let's go split safety. Okay, there's the Will. There's the Sam. It's split safety. Here's the Mike Backer. Okay. Well, right now my right now my guys have ID'd this, right? Five in the box. But I don't know what's going to happen when this guy does this. Yeah. Okay, we're snapping the ball right here. Okay. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if they've told these guys that, hey, they're going to spin because I'm building three by one to three buzz strong, and the Will Backer's going to, going to bounce back in the box, right? And now it turns into a 4-2 box. I don't know if this guy's going to go man and chase him over. I don't know if he's going to bump in and he's going to bump out. There's just too many unknowns to me, all right? So we said, screw it, all right? Just track it, all right? We will always make this guy the conflict read. I don't care if there's only two guys in the box line, all right? You you leave the end for the quarterback, all right? And then, all right, you guys are all purely tracking like the old school zone, railroad tracks, and you are blocking. It's truly zone blocking. And you guys, on the line loves this play because you snap the ball and you just come off the ball and knock the shit out of the first thing you see, all right? You don't have to read and sift and gut and do and make all that stuff. You, you, you truly are zone blocking. All right. Now the quarterback reads this. All right. Now, what I tell the quarterback, what gets him to this comet out here, all right, is if this motion comes and you feel nobody moving, all right, nobody moves. So the will stays where he's at, the mic stays where he's at, the safety stay where they're at. The, the nickel Sam stays there. Everybody stays the same. Now you pull and you throw that, okay, because now we got numbers outside. This guy, this half-field safety has to make the play, okay? If you feel anybody moving, if you feel this, this guy moving with the motion, this guy moving, he's moving, that, whatever, all right, now you just read the end. If the end comes up the field or slow plays it, I, I, you give it, obviously. If he closes, you pull and you run, okay? You guys need to stay alive out here because if somebody shows up, we're going to throw this late, all right? I like that. And, coaches, if you like this so far, go ahead, give us a thumbs up to let us know what's going on. We've got uh, 150 coaches in here right now listening to you, Coach, and I just want them to give us a thumbs up and let us know that they're actually liking this material right here because I know I am. I love the F quick. No, I gotta, I've always wanted to ask you this. Do you What's like that? the F quick at a two by two and bringing them, or do you like the two back and and sending the one back out? Which one's your favorite out of those two? My favorite is the two back. Why? Because it happens so quick, and I, I hopefully I've got some on here. Okay. okay, I've always wanted to ask you that. Yeah, it happens so quick, and you can build the you can build. They're both basically the same, but you can build a uh, um, you can build a whole offense off the. And I got a whole. RPO, uh, quick motion uh, t clinic talk that I that I give. Maybe next month we'll do that one. But um, th this is, and let me let me just show. Since we did talk, so you brought it up, bro, not me. That's okay. fine. That is so fine, I'm gonna, man. I'm gonna give these guys kind of what I tell my guys on this. Okay, is that 
this, this is where this is what started the whole offense. This okay. play, okay. And now I got fired up because I was watching Kansas City Chief film the playoff game, and they ran the, they ran the play. Okay, I was fired up. Okay, okay. But this started back ten years ago. Started everything that we're basically everything is that what this is what Ron's talking about, guys. Okay, is our quick motion. Okay, and this is kind of how, and the reason Ron is, I like this one because th this kind of is how I teach my quarterbacks with this play. So this is install number one, day one, play one. Okay. All right. This teaches your quarterback about numbers and leverage and conflict. All right. Okay. So we line up like this and I'm just going to, I'm just going to draw this defense because it's the simplest one to just explain this, all right? And whatever the front is, over, under, doesn't matter, okay? So we're getting that, all right? So we're going to go quick motion. And here's the here's the, the secret to it, right? Is when you start this quick motion, all right, you need this ball snapped right there, all right? Do not let him get out here. So it's really bring it, bring the motion, snap it. Motion guy, you need to take five as hard, as fast as steps as you can take. All right. And then give me your eyes. Do not look for the football till you take five hard steps to the sideline. Okay. This should put you pretty close to the hash. Okay. There's the hashes. All right. So this is just green is the green is the formation. Fast motion. Zulu. Zone read to the left. Okay, that's the call. Okay, now we give it a one word name so we can just go whatever, you know, jumbo, jumbo, whatever you want to call it. And they're, they're, all the kids know what to do. Okay, all right. These guys, okay, two things, right? Why I like this one better is because the box isn't going to change. Uh -huh. Okay, if anything, if the box changes, it's because guys are leaving, right? Yeah. Not coming into it. OK, so here's the quarterback's rules. Right. If nobody moves, just like I told you on the last one, if nobody moves because these guys are blocking Comet. All right. Throw that. It's the cheapest yard you'll ever make. Yes. Cheap. All right. Now, you got to start to build a game plan out here to protect this. So these guys don't, you know, support real hard. And then you throw stutter goes and, you know, three level floods and all that kind of stuff, you know, off of play action. All right, but this is where it all starts. Okay, so here's here's number one. Okay, there's number one right there, the, the bubble screen. Okay, number two. This is the only, the next the only other thing the, the defense can do. The secondary will adjust. All right, because the D line coach and the linebacker coach are saying, I don't, I no no, I got the A gap, I ain't adjusting. Right, okay, <laughs> let the DB coach adjust to it. We're building three by one. So this will happen. Okay. That'll happen right there. Okay. And they'll go to three strong or three strong buzz. Okay. So then his thought is number two is this. The gift. The gift is he runs a five-step hitch or a five-step slant, depending on that guy's how that guy plays it. Okay. Because I got one on one over here, it's a gift to you. Okay, if they're playing cover three and this guy's off, he'll just throw him a hitch route. If the guy's sitting there on him, run the slant on him. Okay. Okay. If you don't like that for some reason, say it's press corner and you're just not real fired up about throwing to your ex, then quarterback first level conflict three, just like we've taught you day one. Okay, he takes the back, you pull run. He doesn't take the back, you hand it off. Our lines blocking Zorro. Okay. All right. The third thing that can happen is they'll stay. Okay. They will stay high. All right. And the backer will move out and they'll bump it like this. Like a cover two team will do that to you. All right. Now you're saying, hell yes. Right. As soon as this happens, it's a man call there and hand the stinking ball off. Okay, so three is hand it off. 
So this is how the quarterbacks learn, right? They learn no movement, number one, throw the bubble screen. Movement, check your gift, okay? Five in the box, hand it off. So that's why it's my favorite play. Then you start building stuff off this, right? Okay, let's go back to this. All right, now, so you guys are all good on the zone read. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, now let's change the zone read, all right, to a third-level conflict. So we're going here, all right, and we've added our six blocker, okay? So now we know, all right, this is against the three down front. So this is your other answer for th – that was the, the talk, was tight, tight fronts, three, four fronts, right? So now we've got – now we've got, all right, we got good angles, okay? We got good angles. Still can possibly gut this if we wanted to. I don't know if we do. This guy, maybe he's a little too tight, and the old line coach said if he's a tight four-eye, don't gut it, zone it, all right? But if he was a four-eye out here, okay, we could still gut this. So these guys' rules never change, all right? And now you are, the tight end now is protecting the C-gap. Now the quarterbacks, the quarterback, this now is his conflict. Okay, that's the seventh defender. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now we're building our nickel game. Okay, or our glance game off of this guy. If he wants to fit the run, okay, he's a third level conflict. If he wants to fit the run, we are pulling and throwing. So let's see what happened here. He could have pulled. He could have. All right. But this is, this gives you an idea of the blocking. All right. I love the track of that right yeah. there. And the track of the back. Okay. I think what happened on this. All right, is they went ahead and treated this. You know, everything is game plan specific, right, Ron? Mm -hmm. okay. I think the old line coach, I think JT on this, all right, is we, he automatically pushed it. All right, so now they're they're pushing. So we're getting a double, right? We're getting a deuce. Okay, here, this is still the conflict read for the quarterback. He's treating it like a true three, four front. All right, we're protecting the C gap on the quarterback. And now the quarterback, right, he knows if he plays outside, he can give the ball. Okay. Well, we have a question from Coach Brian. He wants to know, what are the teaching points on the steps for the tight end for blocking? Uh, okay, here's one right here. This is the one I just talked about, right? This is, uh, this is him reading the extra guy fit in the run and yep. throwing the glance. Okay. Such so that, that was just what I was saying, where he's reading this extra defender. The extra defender right here. Hold on. Right here is the extra defender. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So the C gap guy, his job is he basically, coach, he basically has the same rule, right? The same rule as a Sith tackle has. So just just picture this this way, okay? Say this. Say the tight end right here is the tack was the tackle in a spread set, okay? Right here, all right. And the tackle had a five eye, a five, all right, with with a backer on the outside, right? Because remember, a tackle has to protect the B gap, okay? So that's why he sifts a five technique to the backer. Because that backer's true, that backer's responsibility truly is the B gap. So he sifts, he sifts the end with his eyes wait, waiting for if his backer shows up, he leaves the end and blocks the backer. Okay. This guy treats it exactly the same way. He sifts the C gap. All right. He sifts the C gap. So if this guy is going to be a threat for the C gap, he sifts it and with his eyes on on, on the second level guy and comes off on him. All right. If this guy is not a threat, then he can man this backside guy just like the tackle would. So you can see he's he's well, that's freaking Auburn. So basically he's getting sifted. All right. 
because those guys are freaking beasts right yeah. there. But you can see he's taking Sith footwork right there. Okay, he's trying to go through the inside, all right, inside pad of that 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 five technique or nine technique right there. All right, and if that guy was to play up the field, if he was to come straight up the field like this, all right. Make these buttons so small. If he was to come straight up the field, then he would sift and he would go second level. Okay. Also, my quarterback is reading this second level defender. Okay. Because obviously, if they fit, there's only the C gap. If they if they commit two defenders, all right, to the run right here, then we're gonna. That's the third level conflict. We're gonna pull the ball and throw this little glance route in behind that guy, just like that. I love it. Okay. Here's the same thing. Push. Deuce. There. He did not count that guy, just if you want to know. Okay. Let me get back to it. I'm not going the wrong way here. There we go. And well, let me go back. That's fine. All right. Next thing. Okay. I'm showing th these are, I tried to pull some clips that will show you guys uh, three, four. Okay. So here's the way, here's the ways, right? Build three by ones. Okay. <clears throat> Build three by ones. Okay. Remember three, four. Okay, you're going to have two conflict guys. That's a buck. Okay, so how are you going to block it? All right. Well, one way is, right, you got a quarterback can read one, all right, or the line can read line can read one, and you make both your conflicts to the same side. All right, so you do this, make them both to the same side, build three by one out here to put pressure on this guy, all right, and let your quarterback read that guy. Simple, okay? That's one way. So, I'd, Okay, the next way is, right, is to add a defender. Add a guy in here, all right? And now change your conflict to this guy, okay? The third way to handle, all right? The third way to handle is what we call solid. So, so let's do this, all right? We want to run it. And they're in a three, four. Okay, they're in a three, four. Let's block this guy to the play side instead of the back side. All right. Let's let our line stay in the box. Let's gut the back side. All right. And this let the quarterback worry about one guy. So we're always looking for ways to make it easier on this guy because we're a tempo team. We're playing fast. He's making quick decisions, right? He's helping me pay my mortgage. <laughs> so I don't want it very hard on him, right? I want him to, to be confident to go out there and just play fast, okay? So this is solid, okay? So we just make a solid call, right? So now I don't have to push to him. I can keep these guys in the – I don't have to push the backside tackle all the way to – backside guard all the way to there. Now I can gut – and then one of my – this is the next one that goes in, Ron. Okay. Okay. It's three, four teams. All right. So I like that. So you go. So here's solid. Okay. So it's three, four. So you guys can kind of see if I can get this little hand going again. So you guys can kind of see, right? You can see, right? Solid. There's there's the buck right here. Okay. Quarterback doesn't have to worry about him anymore. This is a lot better play to the field, right? Okay, now they could gut this on the backside to him. Okay, now we get a push. We got three for three right here. Three for three. Okay, quarterback. Now here's your conflict guy out there. Okay, so this is solid. Okay, I'm building, right? I'm building, right, this motion right there. 
They're going to spin this, but he's reading the conflict guy. So he could have gave this ball 100%, all right? But he but, threw it because he didn't see anybody move? Well, he saw the safety spinning. And no telling with this guy what he saw, all right? But there, this, this is, you know, you run this every day is, he knows that there is nobody adding – Right, a spin, a spin and safety. There is no. That's why we we built this this deal out here, right? Okay. That's why we built this little formation. Okay, is is he saw nobody respect the bubble. He didn't gotcha. see the Mike play the bubble. He didn't see the conflict guy play the bubble because his eyes are right through here, right? So he's seeing the conflict guy. The, the here's the conflict guy. And he's also seeing the Sam. So remember when we talked about uh, we talked about building three by one to put pressure on the nickel Sam, yes. right? He has to play the, the bubble. If I'd have lined this guy up right here, right, and just ran the bubble, he'd have thrown it then too. Right. This guy has to respect that. If he doesn't throw it, okay, here's who he's really – here's here's who he's, he's, he's his conflict guy is because that's the guy that's – I'm sorry. This is solid. Here's who his conflict guy is because this guy is now blocked because it's solid. If you do, if you do the math, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a seventh defender. He can't be right. He can't play the back. He can't play the quarterback, and he can't play the bubble all at the same time. That's nice. Me personally, it's a lot easier to run when it's just nobody out there. Oh yeah, there's the gut. See the gut? I do. And again, you are you calling that from the sideline, or those are the players calling it? While or is that built yeah. into the play? That's built into the play. That's a decision okay. the backside's going to make. Okay. 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 Now, this is not the back's fault. This is Noel's fault. This is Coach Mazzoni's fault. Okay. And I made a mistake. All right. If you can see, all right, is that the back, JJ right here. Mm -hmm. okay, last year, I, I, you know, I had one of those brainstorms, right? Is that if you don't get the back, if you don't get the back, ball, if you don't get the ball back, if the back doesn't get the ball, let me put it that way, all right? If the back does not get the ball, let me see if I can get back to this one. Yeah, if the back does not get the ball, I told him to disconnect and run away from the play. Uh huh. Okay, so if he didn't get the handoff, I told him to disconnect, act like he's got the ball, and run this way. Okay, no good. Don't do it. He was that? Okay, because it for some reason when when he disconnected and went this way. We got so much faster flow from the backers this way. Okay, so they went opposite. They, they, they knew they someone would, they up. close, and they'd see the back disconnect. Then they would start playing the quarterback. So I would rather him act like run just like he has the football and make this guy go in here and think he has to tackle him. Okay, okay. so right here you can see where this ball should hit. JJ, if JJ is running right through here. This see this guy, he's we can't gonna do the uh, the pointer anymore. Yes. Okay. So there, there's the gut. All right. There's where JJ should be running right down the hash. Yeah. Just I like love, that. I love cutbacks. Same play. How many yeah. one word plays do you take into a game like when you're going fast? Now, here's the here's here I'll just in a second. Okay. Here's here's the issue too, okay? The issue is my center right here. All right? He's a backup center. And he weighs about 275 pounds. That guy from Oregon is a freaking beast. Okay? So if we were to game if we were to go back into this, all right? We would say we would just take the gut off. Uh-huh. And let let the guard 
right? Try to help this center a little bit because that's all that's all, but everything else looks good on this. Okay. Uh, how many one word zone read plays do I ha take in? Yeah. Well, funny you should ask. That's okay. great. I'm asking all the right questions today. Come on. Oh, I'm in it. Sorry. I gotta go back to this thing. And coaches, thank you. If you have any questions again, put them in the chat and I will ask uh, Coach Mazzoni why he's bringing this up. And thank you all so much for, for being here. That's what I love about this freaking program. If you guys don't get it, you should get it because it's cheap as hell. Okay. So we go here. This would be. Tempo runs. Nice. Tempo runs. Okay. This would be tempo runs right here. So like as I go, if I sorted this for you guys, all right, I can sort it by C-I-Z-R right here. Mm -hmm. So if I was to go play type, all right, search by play type, and I'm not the expert on it. My GA does most, my guy does most of the stuff. But everyone is it is tells you everything about the play. It's a run. It's a run screen option. It's a one word play. It's an eyes. It's an inside zone read with a gift involved. Okay, so I'm gonna carry uh, just tempo different formations of zone read. Buzz zombies one right. Frisco's one. Fungo's one. Bat is one. L A is one. All right. Lakers is one. Uh, Tucson is one. Okay, so there's what six or seven right there. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I told you earlier, right? Is that my zone read stuff is basically tempo plays. All right. Now every every game too. All right. There's going to be play specific that you want to change a formation on a zone. Say you want you want bunch way out wide. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you want to run a zone read tempo play. All right. Well, when we give it that one word play, it tells the receivers what the, so we don't call a formation with it. So it tells the receivers what the formation or where to line up is. So you could have a one, you could, you could put in uh, um, um, San Diego and San Diego told everybody, Hey, that's unbalanced to the field zone read. Okay. And then you, then once you do that though, that's in your arsenal. San Diego can never change. Gotcha. And tell the guys next week San Diego is unbalanced into the boundary. You can't tell them that. Once you once you start adding your one word tempo plays, right? They're always one word. They're always that every okay. year. Okay. And Courtney, this program he's using is a just play solutions or just, just play football play solutions. Yes, and we're gonna they're gonna do a. And I, I'll pull that slide up when I get done here. They're gonna they're gonna do a, a webinar. Uh, that I'll, I'll put up the uh, kind of like you're doing right here. Okay. They're going to do a webinar. Kind of, hey, you can put quizzes on here. All right. Um, so I can, I can, it, it'll build a quiz for me. It'll build recognition where it has a timer on it, where it'll flash up a defense and your guys got to, got to say, Oh, that's cover two within two seconds. It'll build a quiz, a game plan quiz. It'll do scripts. I mean, it's kind of a – the guys came – they came up with an unbelievable – like, here's my RPOs, right? So, there's Saint, right? So, so th this would be – this this would be a uh, – uh, uh, when when you're – this is your conflict, your pre-snap read conflict, uh -huh. right? And you're reading it. So, um, it's a heck my, – my quarterback – and then Love the other it. thing it does, it give it shows you it has another one you can click on your players, a list of your players, and it'll show you how 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 long they've been on it for each week or each day. So they can't BS you and say, "Yeah, coach, I was on it," and you you can yeah, bring it up and be like, "Yeah, you're lying." It up and and go, "No, you're only on it for 15 minutes, bro." I got you. Yeah. All right, we have another question. Uh, if the defense is playing the three to the back, have you ever run same side zone instead of jumping the back to the other side and use the tight yes. end? To okay. Yes, yes, I have. Um, um, 
Same. This that's the other thing I think for us zone read gun teams, right? Is you have to build a same side, and and they're they're one word plays for us. Okay. Right. So you got to build like in our in our C scheme where we're blocking with the tight end, we want to be able to C block it and we want to run that same side. All right. Now the problem with the same side, uh, I'm not as I, I like the same side runs more out of like counter. Okay. And yeah. In, in in the zone scheme, when the tight end is attached, I like the I, because it kind of protects that same side edge, you know, a little bit better. So uh, you know those type of things. But okay. Yeah, that's another discussion. But here you can see, nice job. This is what we're talking about on the on the uh, on the track of the back. Yeah. That's beautiful. where you want to get it right there. Freaking beautiful. See what else we got in here. All right, you got some love from Coach Patrick. He says, love this. Coach turned me on to pin and pull Giants versus three, four, four eyes, and now gut versus four eye on backside of zone. That's why you're the goat, coach. That's <laughs> why you're the man. All right. Let me I'm, I'm going kind of going through some of these uh because I think I got when I got out of the program, I had to start from the beginning again. That's fine. Now the, the fun one is when we start talking about the third level conflict reads out of all this stuff, right? Same thing. See, that became a one word play. So now it's in the next game, too. Okay. All right, boys. Here, I'm going to throw this up one more time for you guys. Okay. I think if I was you guys, I. And one of the things that really turned me on about it, because I'm not about selling, you know, I know high school coaches got the hardest job in America and funds are not easily come by. So um, um, uh, what I liked about it, too, was it was so reasonable and they're football guys, which was cool. And they were so helpful. And let me see. I, they sent me this slide because I – and the news said, hey, look at it. These guys want to learn more about this program. All right. Um, next Saturday at five, there you can read at the bottom. Just visit justplacesolutions.com. And they're gonna have and they're gonna be doing a webinar, a little webinar on all the things like I don't I can't show you about the quizzes and the timers and all that kind of stuff, but they could show you all that kind of stuff. And you probably could get you're probably gonna get some information on costs and all that kind of kind of deal but uh i've been living on this thing for like we just got it for like about two or three weeks and i can't get it. here's the other cool thing i like about it is uh if you the, just hit the cancel there you no go. so uh with this one here's the other thing I, I i love about it so when i'm watching when i'm watching film That's my problem. I click click stuff. When I'm watching film, I have a uh, – or you're drawing stuff up on napkins and all that kind of stuff because it's right on your laptop, right? Okay. Um, come on. So I have this little thing in my in this playbook. I just go right to here to my auxiliary runs, right? So I got auxiliary runs and these are like, look at train snowman from Ohio State, right? <laughs> Heat clip, Omaha pony, right? So these are things like, I'll, I'll just, I'll draw them on here so they're in my playbook already, right? I you have know? to ask, what, what, what is train snowman Ohio State? Like, is there a story behind that or? Cause that is okay. the, the random. Watching um, um, our defensive coaches, we just hired a guy from the Big Ten, and he had like a plays that are hard to defend uh, cut up, and he and I were watching it. I don't even think I – did I draw this one up yet? I don't even know. Sometimes I just write the name to just remind me. Oh, yeah, I did right here. So 
Uh, so I went and drew it up. So this was an Ohio State play, and they were gashing people, right? And it fit perfect for us. Where's the edit coming up here? Is it that bash type play that they run? No, it's a little. I don't know why it's not coming up. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell these other guys to get to get on right now. Okay. Do you see him on there? Um, is it Craig? There it is. So what they did was right. So snowman means I'm gonna call. Uh, I'm gonna call same side uh, tight zone right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna call same side tight zone. And if they give me this four eye, this three down look with the buck on the line on same side like this, then uh, then I'm going to check it to, to uh, Ohio State. And so what Ohio State was, it was basically they were turning it to zone read back the other way and reading the conflict guy. So it's like, you know, like you know how people run the the pow, the, the the power read. Yes, it's it's zone read power like power read. With the back away so now he's going to come across and we're going to read that end so we're going to arc instead of man in the, the four eye we're going to arc the mic backer like we like we would on zone read man him instead he's going to arc it we're going to block like comet out there and now we're just going to read that in either hand it off or a quarterback runs it so nice. i thought it was a cool play and i've seen it so i just i've put it in my playbook when I just saw that, I thought that you were on a train. You saw a snowman right as you were watching Ohio State. Oh, train formation. Snowman means that uh, that there's like an ice play for the line. Snowman means there's going to be there could be. We're going to call a play, but it could change. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, the, I think the guys are on is uh from Craig from Signing Day. Is that is that one? Yes. Well, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I may have a couple other guys hey, jumping so on. So you as well. coaches out here, I'm going to give you a hey. hey I'm going to just tell them real quick. This is another thing. I don't think costs you any money. I love shit that doesn't cost money, right? Um, yeah. So what these guys did is they developed a. Uh, they've already got like 400 colleges on board. All right, and they got like a bunch of high schools players, especially with this COVID thing going on to market your players to, to colleges uh, so that they can recruit them. All right. Now they'll explain a lot, be a lot better than I do. All right. But I've seen it. I've seen it. The deal, they showed it to our staff and our recruiting guy. And it was like, hi, way you can individually run routes and do skills and do all that kind of stuff. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty awesome deal that you guys at least ought to take a few minutes and watch what they're doing. Okay. Ron, I appreciate it. Hope I did a good job for you. All right. And I appreciate and I'm going to run. All right. Yes, sir. You have a good day, coach. I appreciate it, man. All right. Coach thanks. McKee, can you hear me okay? Yeah. And it, it, it's Mackie. And yes. Oh, okay. man. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, I'm going to play just a short kind of two minute introduction video that shows kind of an overview of our platforms that we put together. And then we'll just kind of jump in and, and show some examples of the functionality of some of the key platforms and really what our platform does for uh, the recruiting process. All right. And coaches, uh, just to let you know, um, I know that Jason Mons, you, he's been a guest on the show. He uses this as well. And this is something that a lot of us, I mean, with, with the COVID and everything, can use. So, Craig, if you share your screen down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Did you click it? Yes. Okay, and then it gives you screen one or screen two. Yeah, which option do you want me to select? Whichever one it's on, because then it'll pop up on my end, and then I can share it. Um, so share my entire screen. So I've, cl I've clicked that. Okay. And it should be popping up on the bottom of my screen right now. Okay. Did it show up? Looks like it's a uh, process in here. Okay. And Johnny, this is an app that we can help use our, uh, for our players. So you want me to show the two screen option, two monitors? Which whichever screen has the the um, software on it. Let 
And Craig, if this is taking too long, we can uh come back and I can bring you on and have your yeah, own. Here we go. Here yeah. we go. Here we go. All right. Adding it to screen. There you go. Fantastic. Everybody can see that okay, I hope. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we're going to click over here to, uh, like I said, the video real quick, if we can just bear with us and uh, we'll kick this off and then uh, jump into how the, the functionality of the platform. So here we go. Welcome to the new era of recruiting. Signing Day Sports is a state-of-the-art technology, making recruiting easier than ever. Completely revolutionizing the recruiting process for both athletes and coaches. With Signing Day, players from all over the world can record verified attributes, upload position-specific drills and movements on a user-friendly platform suited for anyone, and introduce yourself to coaches through the interview process. Coaches have the ability to comb through hundreds of thousands of athletes with the ability to customize their search depending on the exact needs of the program, from position to measurements, even athletic and academic performance. When athletes meet the desired, verified measurables, coaches can dig deeper into their makeup, viewing pro day scripts, and even how athletes respond to college recruitment questions. And using the interview feature, coaches can put a face with a name before an athlete has made it on campus. Coaches can then move top recruits to their personal big board. This platform gives a coach a highly organized and efficient way to fill their roster, building an offense that wins and a defense that dominates. Your team forms in real time. At any point, you can evaluate your recruits' movements side by side. Coaches can now get a frame-by-frame -frame analysis, giving you confidence in your decision before you ever make a visit. As National Signing Day approaches, coaches can reach out and contact top prospects with a personalized message. If you've made an offer, if you're watching a player, if a player is interested in you, Signing Day Sports gives you a way to track your future team until they don your colors at the deadline. With the technology available to the world today, an athlete going unnoticed or under-recruited should not exist. Signing Day Sports is redefining how recruiting is done. Fantastic. Can everybody be able to see that okay? Yes, sir. All right. Hey, so what we've done is we've essentially put together three different platforms for the, to support uh, colleges, high schools, and individual players in the recruiting process. Uh, all three of our platforms have a completely free version. Um, high school coaches and college coaches is 100% free. The parent player app that allows them to upload different aspects of their their player attributes, as well as uh, various drills by position that are that are much like doing a virtual combine, allows them to do that for com completely free for the basic stuff. And then when you get into the video components for uh, verification purposes, as, as well as the, the actual player drills by position, that's where it requires some level of, of, of paid upgrade. Um, so this is what the co college coaches get to see in the platform that they utilize. So they have an opportunity, and we kind of think of this much like we you would a, a Zillow for real estate as an example. So you've got players that you can go through and search their various attributes, you know, based upon uh, their 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 40 yard dash time, their GPA, uh, roll all those players up and then go ahead and look at that grouping of players and, and, and evaluate them to see if they're going to be uh, somebody that you want to connect with and, and evaluate for your particular program. What that looks like on an individual player perspective is their uh, individual their individual profile, my computer's sticking a little bit here, um, has all the, these ba this basic information. That's what I was referring to under the free version. Kids can go in here and upload their height, their weight, hand size, shoe size, wingspan, incorporate any of the other um, maybe track or individual uh, uh, drills that they would like to do. What our platform also does is give them a specific way to go in and, and uh, measure their bench and measure their squats, as well as videotape that in a way that's standardized across the platform. And then when you jump into academics, you've got the unweighted GPA. Uh, when they've completed their ACT and SAT scores, they can, they can upload PDFs that are copies of that and then kick over to the major that, that they desire, as well as a copy of their official transcript.
We've also given an opportunity for the coaches to go directly to the kids' huddle, huddle page that uh, the players can link up here. So in that case, one of the things that have been most valuable for the platform and the, and the feedback that we've gotten from the college coaches that are using it is they love the fact that kids can verify the measurables so that a kid that really is, they said was 6'2", and they put them on their board and says, man, based upon that kid's skill set that I've seen, I really like how he fits into our program. And so I'm going to show you just a quick video of what a verification would look like. And this, the example in this case is wingspan. And you'll notice as we go into it, we, we, we've got the kid, kid on the wall and we adjust his hand so that he doesn't cheat, cheat any to make sure it's completely accurate. So here we go. And what that does is give those college coaches an opportunity to narrow their search from the hundreds of kids that they have in their recruitment area and narrow that down to the, you know, the 15 or 20 they think are really a good fit. And then once, once they've done that, now they've got an opportunity to, to go and look at the kid's pro day film. And so for each kid, they've got opportunity to put in the multitude of positions that they play on the field. So oftentimes kids play wide receiver, DB, sometimes, sometimes kids play running back and slot. So they've got opportunity to go in and film that video based upon the standardized drills that we've, we've put in here and put, put that up into the platform for the college coaches to review. The exciting thing about that is we've given the kids specific instructions. We've given them a video on how to, how to run the particular drill that they're being asked to do. We've given them step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that, as well as instructions on how to film that by standing a certain number of yards back from the position, certain numbers to the left or right, and then the angle of that camera. And you'll see what I'm talking about right here. So this is a wide receiver out of uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, running a, running a dig route. And as you can see, this is much the same information that, that coaches get when they go to a camp or they bring, bring kids in to their campus to a camp or that they, they go and they you know, drive to the particular you know, old school ways of, of, of traveling to the campus and seeing kids in the weight room, seeing kids uh, out on the field doing various drills and bringing that film back to, for the for the college's staff to evaluate and review. And what we've done is just really kind of made that one-stop shop ahead of time before you ever leave campus, before you ever get out on the road, you have an opportunity to see, see a number of these kids and start to narrow your search to the ones that are really a true fit for your program. Then the next step from here is now you've got the opportunity as a staff at the college level to be able to take these kids and evaluate them in a side by side analysis. So here we've got the same kid that we saw earlier that was a, a wide receiver and we've pulled in another kid from the from a different part of the country or could be a kid just from across town. And what our side by side analysis does, which is a patent pending product that we've put out is allow you to have that true side-by-side -side of evaluation and even drill that down to a slow motion analysis if you choose to do that. So I'll quickly just play this uh, th this this uh, particular video. Sorry, it didn't for some reason it didn't start together. That's a that's odd. There we go. So they start together. You can see them. You can you can evaluate that side by side. You can even take it where you have the, the little bar down here at the bottom where you can do step by step to see if they're doing any doing a fault step off the line, whether they're coming across here and, and uh, who gets to their spot first to cut across, who has the biggest burst out of the cut. This is a strong evaluation tool for those for, for college coaches to really narrow down the kids that they they want to continue to recruit and engage with. Um, the, the other part of this that's, that's really cool, and it, it really kind of shines even better for, for positions like quarterback, but we've got an opportunity to overlay these both these positions together in what we call ghosting. And so you can see them right over top of one another in the video as well. So now co college coaches have gone in, they, they've searched the recruits, they can move them to their, to their prospect list. And once they've done that and moved them to their prospect list, They've got, got an opportunity within this platform to actually be able to go in and rather than chase a kid around, whether it be through email, on cell phone, text, uh, direct message on Twitter, they've got an opportunity right within the platform to go ahead and, and message him within the, within the system. Now, what's really cool about our platform that we think was a bit was in high demand was 
colleges are just really tired of getting bombarded either from phone calls or from emails from from random places across the country. So what this platform does is the only time a kid can message with a coach is once he's been invited to do so. And so once that invitation goes out, the coach has an opportunity to carry on an ongoing conversation with the kid, ability to historically track that for compliance purposes as a go forward for his compliance department and really just get a, a, a sense of, you know, I only have to go to one place to do all my communication back and forth with kids. And so those are the real basic you know, aspects of, of the college platform. The other cool thing we put together is kind of a, a modernized uh, big board for, for the colleges. Um, let me click over here real quick. In the big board, they can take a kid that was part of their prospect list and then show the type of that, that depth of where that kid is in their recruiting cycle. So maybe a kid in, improved his his level of, of, of recruitment. Now he's my top tight end for whatever reason and criteria that goes into that process. And now we've got an opportunity to have this done electronically. Uh, they can print these out. They can print cards and put them on the old school whiteboard if they choose to do that. Really what we're all we're doing with our platform is giving those colleges a conduit to the access to the information that kids are providing through the portal of their of their iPhone platform. Um, the, the other kind of last aspect to this is the ability within the platform to take a kid and make notes on that kid. And so the colleges can 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 type some information, you know, great routes. And then he can tag different coaches coaches down here that they want to see that evaluation process and maybe roll that up from an from an analyst to a defensive coordinator to a uh, head coach whatever that whatever that track for that college might be and uh, have that that track historically re refer back to those messages messages in that history when and if they choose to do that so for colleges it's really just a one stop stop shop to have them have this pipeline of individuals that have come into the platform and standardize videos to analyze and analyze them along the way. So there any kind of thoughts or questions at this point, I'm just going to show you a quick uh, overview of the high school platform for, for the high school coaches to, to manage their team. But I'll, I'll stop just for a second in case there's any questions. Um, no, quite just what is the uh, URL they can go to? Uh, they can go to signingdaysports.com. That gives them a, a, a broad overview of all the aspects of the platform. And at signingdaysports.com, they can go ahead and, and uh, click on the contact information, uh, send that to our staff, and our staff will follow up with any coach who wants to go a little deeper into the platform, ask additional questions, and, and allow us to, to outline how best we can support their needs. Okay. So the high school platform, one of the, the important pieces of this was and, and kind of our mission is to return this whole recruiting process back into the hands of the coaches. We're not a recruiting service. We don't, you know, pump up a pump up a kid or or highlight a kid in any way, shape, or form. This is simply a conduit of information of providing the best standardized data that, that's available today, so that a kid can get his 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 name and information out there to the colleges that that have searched for the criteria that he meets so that they can engage and go through that process that was always traditionally done on a face-to-face -face level. But even, even today, you know, where, where, where COVID is such a challenge that we have, even before COVID, this was, a, this was a huge challenge, a huge inefficiency that existed within the process of college staffs. And now we've given the opportunity, not just for, for major college staffs to become more efficient, we've given an opportunity for, for staffs on the you know, FCS, Division II, Division III, NAIA. Now they can start recruiting on a more national level where they didn't have budget to travel across the country. Now they can, in this interactive platform, have access to information and kids that they might not have ever come across before that are that might be a great fit for what happens with, with their with their program just because of either geography or different things that, that had, had limited that previously. So within the high school platform, what we've done for, for the high school right out of the gate is give them an instantaneous opportunity to, to, to one click upload all their players from Huddle. So essentially what we've done here is for, for a this and like I said, this platform is completely free for the high schools, no cost. You take your players, you download a CSV file from Huddle, you upload them right here, and that makes every one of your players instantly um, searchable within the, within the database. 
and then you make a decision as as a as a team, as a as a coach and your individual players make the decision on when or if they want to upgrade their platform to the to the premium version and that premium version then contains the videos that allow them to uh, be better evaluated and analyzed by the schools across the country so that one step one 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 click upload instantly provides a coach then to use the management tools for his individual team so now he can go in and if he if he chooses to uh, we've got an announcement feature he, in here that allows the coach to create an announcement that goes out to the entire team and the players how they do that is they just download the the signing day sports app from the either the apple store or the android store and they've got access to all the information and ability that the platform provides and then if a coach in addition to sending it out through the signing day sports app wants to do a text message or an email that in, in, for, for really important messages all at once and get that blasted out that's what this platform provides uh, the next part of what we offer is that's really interesting is uh, a, a depth chart. And we're working through some final programming of this this week to e even enhance it further. But what it does is give coaches an electronic version of what traditionally ends up on a spreadsheet or on a whiteboard. And the, the beauty of it is that we can go ahead and save this from week to week. And so you can reflect back on how your depth chart might have changed over time and allow you to, to see what, you know, what kids have moved up the board, what kids have dropped down that allow you to better manage your week in week out uh, practices. And then also for certain schools, they've they had they expressed a huge interest in being able to print this out for programs uh, for game day. And so we've given the ability to do that with this as, with this as well. Uh, we've also given within the platform an opportunity for coaches to build out what's called a prospect list so that coaches are interested in what players are really kind of college level players. And so many coaches create just a list of the key prospects that may have a chance to play at the next level, at least in the, in the opinion of the high school coach. And then uh, we've given a, an ability for those, for colleges and high school coaches to interact and share that information back and forth. Um, really a cool feature and it's been something that's been in high demand. As we showed earlier, we've also incorporated the film room feature where we can do some of that side by side evaluation for kids that have put their video into the platform. So maybe you've got a, a key quarterback competition or or def defensive back, tight end, whatever that might be. Now you can really throw that in here and start to evaluate some of the stuff that's going on from player to player that builds on what you've already evaluated in your practices as well. And then we've also got the uh, uh, ability to do individualized messages to players through the platform. And there again, we are able to track this historically and reflect back on what occurred at what time. And this has been a, a huge feature from, from the, the, the perspective of the high schools, high schools that we've brought on with the ability to be able to do that. And then one of the last features that, that we, we added, which is just like the college platform, is the ability to take individual player notes so that you can you know, type a note in here, just like we did with the, with the high school platform. You can tag different coaches so that, you know, maybe the head coach needs to know about a particular disciplinary issue on a kid, or you're talking through, you know, your linebacker core of why, why a certain kid's getting more playing time than another kid and how, why he's moving up the, the, the depth chart. These are all kind of features that were in demand from the discussions we had as we were building this out over the last year and a half. We're really excited about the reception that we've gotten so far with it. And it's been, Kind of a huge deal and then finally we've got uh what we uh, what's called our film room feature and this ori originally started out as a feature for for high schools to track all the film the excuse me the the weight room feature that we've the, giving them an opportunity to track all their lifts within this within this platform and then as we talked to coaches it kind of evolved into hey you know i'd love to be able to track attendance and i'd like to be able to track you know who showed up to film and, and different things and so really this is kind of a tracking feature that's customizable by the high school coach. So these tools, this benefit of this, this platform helps keep the, the high school coaches involved with, you know, which kids are being engaged by college coaches on the recruiting front, but also helps them manage their team in a, in a really effective way. And then uh, I'm gonna click over and just show like a 20 second video real quick, and then we're, we're, we're about to wrap up. But essentially I'll just show you what, how the functions of the platform actually works for a parent, for a parent or player and what conduit they're using to upload their information into this platform so that they can be evaluated by college coaches where they can be evaluated and supported by their high school coach and the benefits for those co for those coaches both high school and, and college to have a free platform to help them better manage that entire process
When athletes first log in, you'll land here. At the top, you'll see a placeholder photo with a plus icon. You can touch here to add the athlete's photo. Below the athlete's photo and name, you'll see measurables. Here, you can touch to enter all of the measurable data about the athlete. Below measurables, you'll find testing. Here, you can touch to enter all the data about the athlete's abilities. Below testing, you'll see academics. You can touch on each section to add information about the athlete's academic data. Once you have locked in all the important information, coaches across the nation will have the ability to customize their searches and find you. Signing Day Sports is redefining how recruiting is done. All right. Well, I appreciate it, man. Coach Mackey, thank you so much for giving us time today to share this with folks. And once again, at uh, signingdaysports.com, uh, those of you coaches out here that have questions, you want to go a little deep, deeper, uh, throw some information in there. We'll reach out and talk more. And if needed, we'll put a kind of a customized Zoom meeting together to go over the platform more in depth. Uh, we've had a great reception from so many high schools. I know J Jason Mons was mentioned a little earlier. He's put his whole whole team on this platform on a premium version to allow them to, uh, you know, be evaluated and, and, and recruited during these these difficult times. Uh, we've got m so many other schools, top out, top schools in the country that have gone ahead and done the same thing. Uh, we're held here to support you. We've got some free free options that uh, I think are really amazing, and hopefully you'll take advantage of them. Thank you. All right, I appreciate it. And coaches, thank you so much for for joining. Um, listen, guys. Be safe. Uh, if you're having football right now, keep at it. If you're not, I'm sorry, but stay tuned. I've got some more guests lined up to come on the showcast. And until next time, let's continue to match the spread, score points, and have fun. I will see you all later.